Welcome back to the Rhonda Swan Show. This week, if you haven't actually noticed, this month has gone completely wild. I have been interviewing the authors of the best-selling book in over 21 different categories, Women Gone Wild. This last month, you've been learning and hearing from the authors, but I've been asking them, what can we expect from their chapter? But the cool thing is, the last six authors are actually here. And they're here because the book has launched. And now we want to dive even more deeply inside of what was their motivation for saying yes to Women Gone Wild. What makes them wild? And what can we expect now more from them on our upcoming Women Gone Wild Summit that's taking place on September 28th through October 1st. Make sure you are aware when we send out that registration because it is going to be a Gone Wild extravaganza. Four full days. 12 different women speakers, celebrities coming out and sharing their wild stories. W is wealth. The second day is I, which is intuition. Third day is L is leadership. And the fourth day is diversity. We've got women from all different, not only walks of life, but from different areas in life that have either taken their passions and turned them into empires or taken their deep inside calling and turned it into impact for the world. So what do you say? Let's bring the last six authors of the best-selling book, Women Gone Wild, to the show. Welcome, ladies. It's so good to have you here. <laughs> so awesome. These women are absolutely dynamic. In fact, all of you are so inspiring. And that's why I wanted to have you guys on the show together, because what you've all done is quite unique, even to some of the other authors. Every single one of you are not only international best-selling uh, or best uh, international speakers, but you also have turned your gift and your passion into a thriving empire and a business that changes people's lives. Now that to me is completely gone wild. So I wanted all of you here together because I know there's like many of our, our watchers and our viewers are like, okay, you know, I've, we've got some deep stories. Now let's talk about the money, right? And for me, I always talk about the mission and the money, right? We leave with mission, but man, can you imagine being able to take your mission and turn it into profit, turning it into a way that you can receive more wealth so that you can give more back to the world. And that's what you ladies have done. And that's why you're so expiring, inspiring. You're not expiring, you're inspiring. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna introduce um, my next guest because, and I'm gonna read it, I'm honestly, it's like, these ladies are so unbelievable. Their bios are off the charts. So I'm just gonna read it, but I want you to pay attention and listen. Because when you hear what these women have done, you know now it's time to lean in. All right, I want to bring now onto the show Doria Cordova. She's a CEO and the owner of Accelerated Business Schools, Money and You, the organization that brought to the world the entrepreneurial, experiential, transformational education programs, now both on and offline. Since 1979, with over 165,000 graduates from over 85 countries, the renowned Money and You program has inspired some of today's best known business education and wealth experts. It has touched the lives of millions globally. She is a humanitarian, a philanthropist, a best selling author, and has been in countless digital events, podcasts, films, and book series. She's a global business developer for organizations that are in alignment with her purpose to uplift humanity's consciousness through socially responsible businesses. One of her missions is to transform educational systems around the world and eradicate poverty and hunger. Another, the greening of the world and all of the endeavors that she's involved in must be in alignment with those missions. Doria Cordova, come and join me. Like this is power, right? I love what you actually said at the end that everything that you do has to be aligned with your mission. Yes. That is so powerful. Can you like tap into that a little bit more for me? Well, actually it's one of the reasons why I went wild <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. originally one of my, I call it my past life. Professionally, I trained to be a court reporter. I was an official court reporter in the Los Angeles criminal court systems. And then also in Hawaii. And uh, through a series of circumstances, I really discovered that I was so unhappy and uh, I had everything a human being could possibly want. 
And yet I was absolutely, completely unhappy. And it didn't make any sense to me. And I had an enlightenment experience where I got that I was put on planet Earth for me to do a job. Uh, I don't know what, I didn't know what that meant or anything. And through another whole series of circumstances, I ended up uh, doing one of the first human potential big programs back in 1976, a long, long time ago. <laughs> You're aging yourself, sister, but you look amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And then later I met uh, the beautiful Buckminster Fuller. By then I was 27 years old. And it was then that I really got put on the path of discovery. And I went to the first business school for entrepreneurs of its kind that put on the planet the industry of entrepreneurial, experiential, transformational uh, education. So anytime you see color markers, you see flip charts, you hear the word synergy, you hear the word win-win, uh, leverage. These are some of the things that my mentors put in place and I had the opportunity to be able to inherit that work by the time I was 36 years old. And I've been doing that ever since. Well, I, I absolutely love the work that you've done. And I know that you're very humble in and what you have done. And, you know, you saying yes to Woman Gone Wild was a, a, a true honor, right? Because I know the work that you've put in. And it sounds to me like, Doria, like everything that, that you now have transformed into has also been become part of your life's mission. What would you say now is like, what, what's guiding you every day to get up in the morning, be motivated? Like, what is that life's mission that you have? Actually, it is to uplift humanity's consciousness through socially responsible business. And what that means is that I have been about creating economic engines around your purpose. So not only to fulfill whatever it is that your heart wants to do, but also to be able to monetize that. And there is... Um, you know, I know that you're going to, that people always ask me, what is it that really moves you? And there is a quote by Buckminster Fuller, a question that I'd like to quote by Buckminster Fuller, which will answer that, which is, how do we make the world work for 100% of humanity through spontaneous cooperation in the shortest possible time without any ecological offense or disadvantage of anyone. So when we create product and services that answers that question, then we're going to begin to have a world that works for 100% of humanity. And that has been my driving purpose since, I, since 1977, when I met Buckminster Fuller at the beginning of the Hunger Project. Well, it's so big, Doria. I mean, if you think about obviously what's happening now, I, unless people are not only waking up, but there's those of us that are there to actually shake them and wake them, right? This consciousness is going to stay stagnant. And that's the work that you really are doing. And, and I absolutely, um, I, I, I so highly respect the, the effort and the time that you've put in to help increase this consciousness and help wake more people up. Because you're right, the, the more conscious we are, the more awake then the more how we learn how to make and turn that into not only conscious income, like that's, that's something that I really heavily am focused on as well and why Women Gone Wild is so beautiful because it's about how to generate and create income consciously. And it means waking people up, but then receiving, tracking the money line. And that's something we're going to talk about on that wealth day. And I know that's probably going to be the day that you're going to be part of because you're so dynamic in the attraction of wealth. Can you, uh, you know, on that topic, can you share a bit about um, what is, what people can expect from inside of your chapter? Because I know you tapped in a lot of these elements that I want them to be so encouraged for those that haven't gotten the book yet to certainly get the book, but also to join us on the summit when you're speaking. Well, I am really excited for the world to get to understand that wealth is having access having access to cash, having access to expert, having access to uh, support 
and to education and to people that can support you when you're really down and out. When most people don't understand that resource poor people, they are no poor people, they're only resource poor people. And many times middle class people don't have the level of accessibility that many of us here have. So when you really begin to take stock of what you have access to in your life, automatically you're going to start feeling wealthier because most of us, if, if you are watching this and you have a home and you, you, know, you have you know, accessibility to technology, you have endless education, particularly since COVID began. There's so much education now. There's so much accessibility and that will turn into wealth. So my chapter... Is, um, is about that, but it also tells a story of when I met one of my heroes, Ted Turner. And uh, wow. it was somebody that I had always wanted to be able to meet because he, I, I admire him so much. Like I always wanted to grow up to be like Ted Turner. And, uh, and for many reasons, and I listed in the chapter. And so when I had access to him and was able to meet him through his beloved, who I didn't even know it was his sweetie. I just, I fell in love with her for how magnificent she is. And, uh, and then find out that her life partner is Ted Turner. It was, it, and it, I became so much wealthier. I feel like a trillionaire that night, that day. And so accessibility, if you make a list of all the things that you have access to, and you make a list of all the assets that you have, immediately your beingness, uh, you're going to start feeling different because you now know that you at least can reach out. And, and, I, and I can't help myself, but I'm a mentor, so I want to give everyone an assignment. And this is the assignment for you, that if you can make a list of, of people, and I'm going to say U.S. dollars, and I know that it could be whatever the equivalent is for you. So let's say that if you can make a list of the number of people that you could call up and ask for a U.S. $1,000, that, that you may or may never pay back. They are going to give this to you because for whatever reason, you, you have a mishap, somebody's really ill, whatever it is, and, and you just call them up and you say, can you please make available to me $1,000? And I don't know if I'll ever be able to pay you back. Can you please do that for me? If you can make a list, and so I made a list of at least 100. So I know that in 48 hours, I could have in my bank $100,000 because of the accessibility that I have and also because of the re reputation that I have and because of what I have done in my life. That immediately will also begin to change your beingness. And when you begin to surround that with a clear life purpose, which the other beautiful, beautiful uh, you know, co-authors speak about, and you can create an economic engine around that, your life is going to work and also answering that question. I love it. I mean, this is big, right? Like, I know everyone listening is going, oh my goodness, more from this woman. And you will be hearing more from Doria Cordova on the Women Gone Wild Summit. But Doria, before I go, I have to ask this question. And because it's, it's like, it always, I learn so much from people when I ask this one. And it's, if you were to know what you know now, and to ask your little small Doria self, like maybe five or six years old, what would you tell her your best advice would be? That life is going to be about making mistakes. For the rest of our lives, every human being is going to be making mistakes. So if we can transform those mistakes into learning experiences and know that those are like one foot in front of the other. It's called what Buckminster Fuller said, we have a, a right foot and a left foot, not a right foot and a wrong foot. <laughs> so we are always learning from our mistakes. If I could have said that to my young, young self, I think I could have saved myself so much pain because I spend, and most human beings spend so much time making themselves wrong and feeling so much regret about things that were just part of life. So mistakes are just learning experience. 
Ah, brilliant. I love it. Doria, where can they find more uh, from you if they want to reach out to you more directly? Certainly you can find her directly if you get the book, wgwbook.com. But where can they find you, Doria, uh, so they can learn more from you? Anytime they can definitely find me through social media, but they can go to um, uh, www.dccordova.com or meetdoria.com and they'll have the um, ability to be able to connect with me. Amazing. Thank you so much, Doria. I cannot wait for you to be on the summit and congratulations. Your chapter is primo. All right, next I'm going to bring up the second author and my guest for the show. Her name is Camille Robb. This woman is so dynamic. You are going to absolutely love her. She's called the fabulous Camille Robb. <laughs> she is the CEO of Just Fabulous Care Corporation and Global Concierge Services. JFC Global, global speaker and mentor. She's an entrepreneur investor and advocate for children for 25 plus years. She is very highly energetic, hardworking, full of smiles, and has over 25 years of progressive experience caring for children and adults of all ages. Fabulous Camille Robb is on the board of directors with Dr. Phillips Chambers, a member of the WOAMTEC group, African American group, Project Feeding Kids, Embraced Families, WWCA Florida chapter. She has owned and operated a student exchange program that hosts students from all over the world, literally from China, Japan, Brazil, Africa, you name it, this woman has done it. And she used her skills to create a secure and nurturing environment while supporting each student to achieve their educational goals. Fabulous Camille Robb, get out of here. I cannot wait to hear from you. What's happening, sister? How are you? I'm blessed and I'm doing absolutely fabulous. And how are you, my dear? Uh, I'm so good. It's really good to hear every time we connect. I mean, we've been working on this book now several, several months together. And you just literally, you do, you bring that fabulous energy that makes everyone just feel so incredible, you know? And I, I know that's just part of who you are. However, I'd like to ask you, Camille, like, would you say that part of this vibrance and this exuberance that you have, this frequency that you give, is that part of like your life's mission and like your why? Like how did you weave into this? Have you always been this way? Like share a little bit more depth about you. It, it's, I've been like this. My grandmother created this. Yeah. What you're looking at, it's all my grandmother. So oh. when, I, when I came into this world, my mother wasn't ready to take care of me. So my grandmother took me in and that's how the fabulous, the name fabulous showed up. and. I remember one day we were on our way to church and she said to me, what's wrong with you? I'm like, nothing. You know, I didn't want to go. She said, I, you need to go back inside, put your smile on, and don't you ever step out of this house without a smile on your face. Because your smile is not just for you, it's for the world to sleep. So get back inside. And I went back inside, I washed my face, came back out, and she was smiling and she said, that's my fabulous, that's my girl. And that was it. <laughs> Wow. Like, so then you literally have used that. I mean, that's, you literally gave me goosebumps. I'm not kidding. If we zoomed in my whole legs, everything is those little chicken bums on my legs because you know, Camille, like these are the kind of things that happen to us in our life that do change us, you know, and they shift the way that we navigate. I mean, I most recently, I had to go into emergency surgery and I tell you, I was a pretty happy lady, but I came out of there like, woo, like, wow, I am so grateful for life. You know, and so would you, adding on to this grandma story, because I think it's really big, and this is why it's so beautiful hearing from you, because we're weaving so many beautiful stories, especially those that are coming from the book. What, um, what kind of stories are you telling inside of your book chapter? Because I know like you really start to open people up into this being fabulousness and how have you now used this and navigated it and turned it into your wild story? Of course, when you say while, I remember when the, the book first was introduced to me and they say while, I'm like, really? Wild? <laughs> you guys don't know the meaning of wild yet. So for me, this, I'm, I'm all about education. You have to keep learning in order to grow. So I feed off of my students. I'll give you an example. I, I met a young man when he was 16 years old. And his thing, he wanted to go to school, but he lost his mom, lost his dad, and didn't have the money to go to school. So my husband and I got a phone call and we said, okay, we're going to help him. 
We didn't ask where the money was coming from. We just say it's going to happen. I mean, less than, um, uh, less than two hours later, I got a phone call. Hey, I have something for you. And I'm coming over. Are you in the country? I said, yes, I'm home. They said, which one of the home are you? I said, I'm at the Garden of Wonders. And I, she came over. She had me a check. And Rhonda, the same amount of check that she handed me is the check that I needed to send this kid to school. And I did it. I didn't ask anybody for any money. I didn't ask for any. I just said, okay, this is what's going to happen. And it happened. Now he is now in school. He already completed his third year in school and one of the highest students in his class just because one person took the time out to help him. One. One. And that's what, that's what I feed off of, how I can make a difference in one person's life. Because if I can teach that one person, that person can continue teaching the next person. Wow, that's really beautiful. Now you've turned that into really your mission, right? This is what you do. Um, share more about that. Like, cause that's, that is such a deep, wild story because you know, many people are thinking, oh, let me just find a way to make passion and make money and find a way and I will leave an impact. But everything you're doing is about changing people's lives and making an impact. How have you turned that into like your livelihood and what you do? So this is how I started with the, with my, with the mission that I have is the change in the culture, our culture, connecting to different countries, building bridge to different countries so they can know that the education that we have here, we take, it for, we take advantage of that. Imagine, I have a young man right now from Saudi Arabia. He came to me through somebody else that I've never met, word of mouth. Now, people all over the world are coming and asking me, so how can I send my child to you? When can I send my child to you? Do I have a waiting list? And I always tell them, if I know you're serious about what you're doing, because when you come here, we want to make sure we provide a home away from home. I provide everything. So my, my home is a turnkey. Everything your child needs is right here, everything. So those family that paid me, to host their children and take care of their children, be guardian for those children. I take that money and use it to sponsor my children. That's in other country. That's right here in my backyard. So every money that comes in goes out into helping somebody else. Wow. And you have to do that. Yeah. I mean, this is really beautiful. And I, you know, I, you know, we were so inspired too. like, there's so many different, you know, charities. We built our own foundation here in Bali that we donate. We created, it's called Heartstrings Projects. And we contribute and teach children music that are orphan children here. And what I've learned just from even just being in the space of these kids, like you learn so much on just for gratitude and, and how they, you know, may not have nearly any of the things that other kids have, but they're so grateful and they're, you can feel that beautiful energy that comes from inside them. I learned so much from these kids and I can imagine for you, it's gotta be so fulfilling, you know, on a daily basis. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of lessons. It's not probably all just happy sunshine and roses, but it's a real true life and you are giving a foundation for these kids. It's so beautiful and I'm, I'm so grateful that you're part of this book and this movement that we're creating for, for women, for families and for children and also for men, right? I've got so many men that reach out. They're like, wow, this is powerful what you're doing. You know, Camille, can you share too, like, I mean, you're working with kids every day, but you might have different advice that you would have even given yourself you know, are you giving the kids advice now on how they should navigate their life based on where you are today? Like, what would you say your best advice could be? Because I know there's so many families out here that are, you know, could learn so much from what you've gained from being around all these children. Every day is a lesson. I'm learning every day, every day. You see, we take advantage of the rain that falls outside. My student, he goes for a walk in the rain. Why? Because they have rain once a year or twice a year. Simple stuff like that. You know, we sit down, we have a conversation. And I've always said, if we can't have a conversation, we have a problem. And they see me as a mother. He has over, what, about 100 family members, and I've met all of them so far. Because they want to learn more from us. 
he's going to take what he learned and take it back home and teach. So this is where you come in. Each one, teach one. We have to take time out to listen. And if we listen, we will learn. And if we learn, we can share. And if we share, we can grow. Oh, I love that, sister. Amen. Thank you for that. I love it so much. Can you please share with everyone where they can find you? Uh, and of course, you're going to be on the summit. We know uh, you're going to be there. And um, But if they want to look for you now, where should they find you? You can find me on any social media. And if you just Google Fabulous Camille, you see my face. <laughs> I love it, Camille. Thank you for being you. Thank you for doing the work that you do. And thank you for being wild. We'll see you soon. All right. Thank you for having me. Thank you, darling. All right, I'm going to bring out the next author. This woman is really dynamic. In fact, she's in Guatemala right now, which I just love our global, you know, traveling audience and and those that are really taking on different diverse cultures. Um, Her name is Allison Larson. And you just listen to who this lady is. Like, she is so powerful. Allison Larson is a renowned intuition expert, author, media host, and speaker. She's been featured on stages, media, and virtual platforms all over the world. Allison has received multiple awards for her work with intuition and speaking, including the award in excellent presented to her by the City Summit Foundation. Her clients have included professionals, athletes, Olympians, influencers, and mamas. Today, she enjoys guiding professional women to learn more about their femme intuition, as well leading legendary retreats all over the world with her husband, where high-level intuitive entrepreneurs come to align more fully with their greatness. Allison Larson, what's happening in Guatemala right now, my dear? I want to say hola from Guatemala. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here actually helping out at a book writer's retreat and uh, with some fabulous women and men who are getting their messages out to the world. It's so perfect. So tell me, love, what had you say yes to this movement, to being an author in this book and for really helping spread this message? Where did that come from for you? Yeah, you know, uh, I'm really passionate about this. This uh, Why I said yes was because years ago when I first co-founded and started the Speakers Coalition and I had somebody else reach out to me that was in another speaking foundation and they said, hey, I'm really struggling to find powerful women to be able to speak on summits and stages all over the world. And I said, you know what? Me too. I have way more men speakers than I have women speakers. And in that moment, I just decided I wanted to be passionate about collaborating with other women, helping other women, and being able to get my message out there and helping other women be able to get their message out there as well. And when I heard about you and when I heard about who was going to be in the book and the message and the purpose of the book, I thought this would just be a great platform to help women to to be able to step up to the next level, to get their messages out there and to inspire one another, because that's what it's all about. You know, I love uh, how when women come together and collaborate, when we connect, when we work together, when we share our stories with each other, we can inspire each other to greatness. And there's so much competition that goes on in women around the world. And when we can just step into the space of collaboration, we can help each other so much. So uh, that's why I said yes to this. No, it- it's so big, Allison. Like, really, this is why I know the way that we're weaving now and the amount of people that are coming forward, not only just the 22 authors, but we've got then an additional 20, not only celebrities, influencers, but other women that are coming together. And it's like we're breaking this mold because when women do come together, right, we, we use our that divine sense of not only intuition, but really we feel into what's needed. And more than ever, we need to bring these women together and the work that you do, it's true. Like I've been a speaker for 15 years and there's barely, it's always me and like 10 other men typically. It's like, where are the women? And I know this is why it's such a big, uh, your topic is gonna be so big to the women watching that are coming to the summit as well, because they wanna be and and share their voice and leave an impact, right? And that is what we're all about. So would you share more deeply then what they can really expect from you, not only in the summit, but also what you're weaving in from your chapter, because this is like, this intuition day is where women are gonna get that click and be like, oh, bing, oh my gosh, I found my, my mission and my passion, and I know this is something that you're gonna help bring out. Yes, well, and now is the time, it really is the time, the world shifting more towards needing that feminine energy and needing strong women leaders 
to step up and take their place in the world. And uh, the chapter in the book is what I call Femme Intuition. And what I did was I started looking at, I actually held these women of influence groups and I started calling forth women who were making high six and seven figures in their business, who were making a positive impact in the world and who were helping other women. And I started noticing similarities between the women who were leaving a legacy of success and that were making a true impact and also an income in the world. And they all had something in common, and that was that they had these four archetypes of the divine feminine. They had those within them, and they had a good relationship with each of them. So it's like we have these four different personalities within us. And as women and as humanity, oftentimes we just try to operate from one of our archetypes um, rather than looking and saying, hey, I've got this healing energy. I've got a warrior energy. I've got this temptress or magician energy. And then I have this queen energy inside of me. And when we can really get to know all those energies within us, when we can call upon those different archetypes, depending on what situation we're in, then we're able to really step into and use our intuition and be able to bring our message forth in the world and align with our truth and be able to create the things that we were put here to create on this earth at this time. So um, that's what the chapter is all about. And I'm so excited about this chapter because in it, I actually have a quiz so you can determine what your relationship is with each one of these archetypes, which one you need to work on, and then you can start getting familiar. A quote that I love, it says, awareness is the first step to transformation. So you can become aware of which archetypes you've been ignoring, which ones you need to strengthen, what parts or versions of you need to get stronger in order for you to be your best self. So I'm really excited about that. Wow, sister, I love it. You know, it's so cool because I even, um, you know, like I would naturally, right? If you're kind of aware of the archetypes and what you're, what's coming through you, I, it's so recent for me, even like this last year, I'm like, whoa, okay. So this is that warrior side that I need right now. Like so leaning a bit into the masculine, I go hard and I'm like, ah, but now it's time to sit back and just feel like you're that queen, right? And like, it's like become a personality. And it's so amazing though, to be able to help women see this and to let them know it's actually okay, right? Because I think some get, you know, like uncertain or maybe insecure if why should I lean into this form of archetype or that it's, it's also been told that it's wrong, right? There's so much suppression that has gone around in you know, hundreds of years, you know? And so I think it's time for like really to give everyone permission. And that's what this woman called wild is about. And I, I love the angle that you come um, from with this, uh, Allison. I know everyone's going to get a lot from you. Um, yeah, go ahead. Did you want to jump back in? Well, I, I was just, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, and go, girl. Just agreeing with you. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Run. Um, yeah, well, I was feeling it. Is, I, I was going to say with, um, you know, you were making this comment about sometimes we make ourselves wrong. The one tip that I would give to everybody and, you know, I wish I could rewind back and give myself years ago is there's this archetype that I call the temptress or the magician archetype, mm. which is the playful archetype. For those who are familiar with chakras, it's that sacral chakra energy. It's that playful energy. It's that, you know, it, it's the sensual energy. It's that part of us that creates. And in order to create, sometimes we get so so stressed out as business women, we get so stuck in this warrior energy. We get so stuck in the energy of we have to go, 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 do, do, do. And we forget to stop. We forget to create. We forget to play. And when we can step into that energy and give ourselves permission to do that, we actually become far more powerful creators because it's from that playful energy. It's from that central energy. It's from the sacral chakra that we call forth in that creative part of us. So um, that I just wanted to comment on that because that's one thing that so many business women and women that are making powerful impacts in the world, they forget to play. They forget to step into that creative energy. No, you're right. I mean, this is big advice. I mean, you know, because I see it too. And this is part of why I felt that the mission had to really come through is because, you know, I've built massive empires, but I was also always navigating in a male driven, you know, dominated industry. I was in corporate and it was like, boom, boom, boom. You know, that, that really strong feminine one well, that wasn't actually feminine, masculine <laughs> energy, but I got burned out. And then I realized like, I need to let this down and play and lean into my feminine energies and allow all of these archetypes and these personalities of who I am that make me who I am, you know, really be seen. And I think it's a really big topic for women today and why, you know, we are also supporting 
where women are at in every part of their journey so that they can learn from each and every one of us on how they can actually navigate their life. And so I absolutely love it, Allison. You are so dynamic. I'm, I'm so excited too, because now you have a plethora of women to pick from for your speaking. <laughs> like we've got 40 women coming. But one last thing before you go, love, because I know you're in Guatemala, you've got a lot going on, is um, would there be another bit of advice if you were to give that to your, your small self? Like little Allison, this is what you need to know to get to where, you know, you are today? Mm, you know, I was thinking about this question, uh, you know, coming into the show. And I think the most authentic thing that I can say that I really wish that that younger version of myself could hear is you are good enough. Like mm. You are perfect just the way you are. You're worthy of love. You're worthy of success. You're worthy of joy and happiness. And just remember to receive that love remember to play and uh, that you are worthy of everything that's coming your way. <laughs> oh, I love it. So good. It's true though, right? We need to remember this and remind ourselves. So where can they find you, Allison, now uh, other than getting the book and reading her chapter and finding all of her details and she's giving away all kinds of amazing bonuses? Where else can they find you? Yeah, you can, you can find me on social media at Allison H. Larson or, uh, you know, I, for, for this particular topic that we're talking about, you can find out more information on fem-intuition.com. So that's fem, F-E-M-intuition.com. I love it. Thank you, my dear. I can't wait to see you on the summit. Have a good time. Have a great night. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about our next author. We, we've got three more to go, guys. You are going to absolutely love um, this next woman, especially the next three because um, they are making such a big impact in the world that they're, they're living in and that they're impacting and the, the, who they're reaching. Her name is Loretta Wetzel. She's also known, and you know I'll love this one, Mama Soul Wisdom. You know I love my, my, that mama energy, that mama spirit that comes through. She is an inspirational speaker and prominent family entrepreneur expert. Loretta founded the Wetzel Group over 10 years ago, and she netted $80,000 in her first real estate deal. Since then, she has completed multiple profitable deals through real estate education. Because of her success in real estate, she was featured as a published author in conversations with top real estate investors in the volume number two. Utilizing her 40 plus years of combined work, experience with nonprofit, for-profit entrepreneurship, Loretta created her six-piece system to create powerful results for her clients for both personal and business success. She has successfully faced some of the biggest problems parents face today, including time management, good health habits, and work-life balance. She achieved her MBA degree from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign while working full-time in corporate America and raising her family of three with her spouse, Perrin. How are you, lovely lady? Good to see you here, Loretta. Rhonda, thank you so much. And I love being wild. Hello from Cabo. Cabo, oh, you're in Cabo. I mean, look at this. Everyone is all over. I'm in Bali. You're in Cabo. I was in Guatemala. You know what I mean? Like, so Doria usually is all over the world as well. I love it. It's so great to see you and to have you here and your spice and your wildness. You know, um, well, let's just start there. Like, why did you even say wild? First of all, I know what you've done is what's gotten you to be here, but why did you go, yes, I am a woman gone wild. I want to be part of this. And uh, what, what brought you into the yes for women gone wild? What had me say yes is that, frankly, we as a collective were powerful women. And I, you know, I really get tired of other people defining who I am. Mm. And so this is giving permission to all the women out there. Like, you don't let anybody else define who you are. You define who you are because you are beautiful and unique and powerful and special. So that's what had me say yes. That and the fact that I spent 15 years in corporate America and I have nothing against corporate America. I learned some very valuable lessons there. But what they didn't teach me is that I had to spend precious time away from my family as I was climbing the corporate ladder. And so when they said jump, it was pretty much how high. 
And I did that for 15 years, killer salary, killer benefits, over six figures, traveling all over the world. And then one day, two companies emerged and I went from six figures to zero figures in a bat of an eye. Wow. And I'm like, I was angry first and foremost. Let me be just straight about it. I was livid. And then I was scared. I was scared because I I'm I'm graced with age. I may not look it, but I'm as old as my tongue and a little older than my teeth. <laughs> Number one. Number two. Uh, I would I received job offers, but they really wanted me like to work my way up the corporate ladder again, and I wasn't really to, willing to do that. And then number three, I still had two kids in college. And I thought for sure I was going to have to call them up and say, baby, mama can't pay the bill. I lost your job. You're going to have to come home from college and leave your dreams behind. And that scared me. Wow, that's really big. Like, you literally just gave me, me goosebumps. Our production team here, like everyone's kind of got these goosebumps all over. It's like, you know, because this is real stuff. Like these are real stories that happen. And I know that they're happening right now, Loretta, like this is happening around the world. And so, um, you know, I, I think too, it's like this movement that we're creating and what we're doing, it's like, how can we give just a little bit of inspiration for someone to take the next step forward? Like that you can do it, right? That, the, that you are worthy and you can make it through. Cause I was the same. I quit my corporate job to raise my daughter and you know, but what you and I have in common, and I don't know if you know this, but you're a Midwesterner, you're from Illinois, right? My husband went to uh, Champaign, uh, went to Cambridge, or what, what is the school? Uh, Urbana-Champaign. Urbana-Champaign, I'm like, ah! right, uh -huh. he went there. That's where he went to U of I. And um, I am from Michigan, so we're all Midwesterners. But you know what I, I feel, and, and this was something that I realized that growing up in those regions, like we have that survival mentality, like survivor, like you were literally, you know, just the way that the, 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 the state and the way that we were brought up is like, you're surviving. And I think a lot of people can really relate to that. And that it's like, you're always in survival mode. What would you say your best advice would be for let's say someone that might be in that survival mode because you were there when you lost your job? What did you do and what was that best advice that you could give someone like what, how do you take that next step to get to where you are now inspiring women and men around the world? So my best advice really is take the opportunity to listen to your inner self. Mm -hmm. I knew that I did not want to give away 15, 20 more years. Yeah. And this is why I decided to become an entrepreneur and learn real estate investing, which I did. And so fast forward to today, I expanded my business as a family entrepreneur expert so that I can show others how they can involve their families and work from home instead of making someone else rich. You can create your own multiple streams of income involving your family and working from home. But I listened to the inside first, mm. and that's what got me through. Oh, uh, that's so big. I would love that. I mean, you know, we, that's what we ended up doing. My daughter, my husband, and I, my daughter was one, and we started traveling. We lost everything, started our business. We're like, ah, what are we going to do? But we all came together, and now we've got this, you know, big family business. Everyone's got different brands, and it's so beautiful to know that you can do it. And when you support it, and now to learn from you in that way. So is this also what you are sharing and teaching inside of the chapter and on the summit? Or can you give us a little sneak peek of what you're going to go? Through. Oh, I'd be happy to because <laughs> it's my superpower. Yeah. It's gratitude, giving gratitude. And it can be everybody's superpower too. Because here's the thing it's all about mindset. And it's easy to give gratitude when things are going well. But listen, when life slaps you upside the head and you fall down, are you going to stay down? Or are you going to allow the intention of gratitude 
be bigger than the thoughts in your head. Wow, that's big. Yeah, sister, that's I love it. It's all about gratitude and what you can do to give thanks. And hey, I had to practice what I preached today because I want to tell you I arrived in Cabo with no luggage. Oh, not only no. did I not have any luggage, the entire flight did not have luggage. Oh my gosh. And look so, at you. And feel like she just got to Mexico and here you are speaking to us with pure grace and gratitude. <laughs> and listen, it was a lesson. One of the I, I share six simple lessons in my chapter about gratitude. And one of them is focus on the lesson and not the problem. So I focused on the lesson of, you know what? This happened. I can't change it. What can I do to pivot and shift? Lesson number one. Lesson number two, go out and find some fabulous earrings and have some fun with it. Lesson number two. So you focus on the lesson because you attract more of that in your life, what you focus on expands. If you're focusing on the problem, then you're going to be constantly miserable and negative. This is why gratitude can be everyone's superpower. I love it, girl. We'll save those last three because they got to go get that book. You can go get the book at wgwbook.com and learn more about the last three of this six steps. Girl, you are, you're just so inspiring. I love you to death. I really am so excited to hear more from you. Can you share with everyone where they can find you now? Because I know they're going to go get the book and they're going to read your chapter and they'll find, they'll get all that special stuff that you gave away for all the author's bonuses. But where can they find you now? Absolutely. You can find me at www.mamasoulwisdom.com. That's M-A-M-A, soulwisdom.com. And all things social media at Mama Soul Wisdom. Mama Soul Wisdom, oh mama knows best. I love it. Thank you, my dear. It's so great to have you here. All right, let's bring on Katrina Sawa. This woman is a powerhouse. She, I think she's authored like, I don't know, 500 books. She'll tell you, but like, would you see this woman? She is just like, pumps them out. It's taken me eight years to get the second book out. The first one, it took eight years. So I think I need to learn from this one. Katrina, she's known as the Jumpstart Your Biz Coach because she helps entrepreneurs make more money doing what they love and fast. She is the creator of the Jumpstart Your Marketing System and Tell It Like It Is speaker. Seven-time international best-selling author with 11 books, including Love Yourself Successful, Jumpstart Your New Business, Now and the Jumpstart Your blank compilation book series and woman gone wild best-selling book now so that's 12. katrina has a no-nonsense approach to showing entrepreneurs how to develop consistently profitable businesses implementing proven marketing and business strategies she has been featured on the oprah and friends xm radio network abc the cw and dozens of influential podcasts and radio shows Katrina was awarded the National Collaboration of the Year Award by Public Speakers Association, two-time nominee for Wise Woman Award and National Association of Business Owners. She speaks to groups of all sizes, holds live training events, and she's the founder of the International Speaker Network. Katrina, like this is ridiculous, woman. What's happening over there? <laughs> Well, what's funny is now as of Woman Gone Wild, I have 14 books and nine international bestsellers, right? <laughs> now, I must admit, a lot of the books that I'm in are compilations and I wrote a chapter. So come on. But I, they all count. And the they more count. books, the better. Are you kidding? Count, it's gifting. I love it. It's so good. I mean, when I first met this woman, I was like, so I'm going to talk to her about coming on, be being part of an author, being part of the book. And we're talking about something like, this woman has got so many books. My goodness, she's going to pop out this chapter in like 10 minutes. And you did. That's why you teach how to make money and do it fast, because that's who you are, right? So you are completely wild. Will you share what is your wild superpower? Like why you said yes, and what can we like really juice up to be with you? Well, honestly, I said yes because of two things. Your personality, because I knew you're off the wall, like you're just crazy woman. And I loved your energy. And number two, the title. Yeah. I'm like, woman yes. gone wild. I grew up in the era of girls gone wild. And thank God that they didn't have videos and video cameras when I was in my 20s. That's all I, I have to say. Because yes. 
I would have been on that show, unfortunately, somehow, some way in Cabo for some reason or something. So I had to be in Women Gone Wild. And yeah. <laughs> what's funny is it doesn't even have anything to do with that, right? <laughs> Well, it's cool because it's actually, like, if you think about it, we're polarizing. Like, we, our generation, were those girls, right? So it's kind of like polarizing, like, okay, so where did these girls, you know, because it's all about this topic, it's objectification of the feminine, like, what's been going on for centuries, and now these women that have gone wild are completely changing that perspective on women and how they treat themselves. And I think it's really brilliant, you know. I mean, um, I'm 51, okay? When I was 21, I was a wild woman, okay? <laughs> but 30 years have passed and I am now married. Now, I never had a child or gave birth, so, but somehow I still don't have that perfect 21-year-old body. I don't know what happened. But woman gone wild to me is not about being wild. It's about living the life you love. Mm. It's about living a bigger life. It's about design. I'm a business owner and I've been a business owner for 19 years. It is about designing the business around the kind of life you want to live, not fitting your dang life in around your business, because that is no fun. And it's about making a ton of money. And it's not about being selfish. It's about making so much money that you can give so much away and do so much good with it. And that's how I see as a woman gone wild. And that's my mission here on this planet is to help more people do that. Well, and I love, let's talk more about that, that mission, because it's so true. Like what you said is, you know, there's so many you know, like some people are like negative about, oh, you know, they've got this issue about people making money. It's like the more wealth that we can, you know, gain, the better we can do in the world. So talk about more of that mission because it's a big deal. And I know you're most likely going to be on the wealth day because everyone wants to, they want to feel that. And that, I know it's broken. Like there's a broken system when it talks about wealth and we need well, to deconstruct yeah, this financial slavery. A lot of people were, were taught when we were young, like, oh, it's bad to talk about money. Right. I was never taught that. I, thankfully, I was never taught that. I was always taught you can do whatever you want. Now, my parents um, and my grandparents never made over a hundred thousand dollars. So it wasn't in my mindset to make a lot of money, but they loved what they did for the most part. And they encouraged me to do whatever it was. So I didn't have a lot of negative um, feedback when I was young, thankfully, right? I didn't have a lot of things to change and work on. Like I've had some stuff to work on. Don't get me wrong. It's mostly the love side. So I talk a lot about how to get more love in your life and money in your business and how love and money go hand in hand. I know. And so it's, it's the love side that I've had to work on, frankly, to get where I am today. Well, but you know, it, that's, this is the brilliant part, right? Some people get stuck on the money side. Others get stuck on, you know, the love side. And if you actually don't have both, my husband and I talk about this a lot. We're like, you know, people think, oh, I can just go hard. I'm making all this money. But if your wife hates you or your kids, you never see your kids, right? Then you're lost. If your body's not healthy, right? Then you don't have that balance. And that's where it's like balancing in this love of yourself, love of money with relationships. And it's a beautiful balance for that. Is that, is this topic, are you going to go more deeply into this topic in your chapter and what we're going to do on the summit? Because I want to tease everyone. Yeah, I could go into it more in the summit, but in my in the chapter, I went practical tactical. So um, in my business, the thing that really gets me, got me where I am today in multiple six figures and really, really doing the work that I love, making really good money and setting those boundaries is focus. And so I wrote about the power of focus in my chapter. It's organization, it's focus, it's staying really prioritized and really organized. I am so organized. It's ridiculous. I have clients who want to see my desktop. They want to see how I organize my files because I can find things at a whim. And whereas sometimes I'm on a call with a client and it takes them 15 minutes to find a document. I'm like, oh my God, what are you doing? <laughs> like we need to fix your organization, right? So no, I went practical tactical on the chapter, but cool. I always love talking about the love side because Ooh. I grew up with my, well, I, when I was first started my business, I was in my starter marriage with my starter husband who didn't end up being supportive about me being an entrepreneur. And little did I know, you know, so we met when we were in door-to-door -door sales. I did door-to-door -door sales, knocking on doors. He hired me. So I thought he was like 
outgoing entrepreneurial spirit. No, no. When he got a job, he was like, I want to stay good. here. I want to go to work. I want to come home. I want to eat dinner. I want to drink a beer. I want to go to bed. I want to go to work. I'm like, oh my God, I can't live like that. So yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is good that this is exciting because I'm, I really want you to talk about this stuff on the summit, right? So we can go even deeper on that because I know this is, this is the gap. So we went tactical and practical inside of the chapter, which is epic because obviously organization and how to turn your life into a profitable business is exactly what we need. I always say, Katrina, mine is structure gives us freedom. My family's like, you know, structure gives us freedom. Like the more structured you guys are, the more time you've got. And they're like, oh, but now it's ingrained. And everyone is really organized and structured and we have so much more time, right? So it's a really big lesson to, to be learned. All right, lovely lady, what could, would you say, because you've got so many lessons inside of you, let's tap back into the little Katrina. What would, advice would you give her when she's sitting there with her big eyes, you know, like wondering what life is gonna be like? What can you tell her how to prepare for that? I would say that you need to love yourself more and not settle early on. I didn't learn this lesson until I was in my 40s, right? And, uh, and then I wrote a book about it. But back then, I was an only child when I was really little. And then I had a couple stepsisters along the way with my mom's uh, second and third marriage. And I wanted to be in the spot. I wanted attention, right? And so I did some of the not so great things girls gone wild. Hello. So like I did, I, I, I guess gave in to some things thinking that that would help me feel wanted. And I have a, a one time I remember an experience where my dad, I hardly ever saw my dad. I would lived with my mom and I only got to see him maybe once or twice a year. And there's a time I remember where he was two days late to pick me up. Right. And not feeling wanted. And so that feeling was just devastating. And I think that's why I put myself in the spotlight. I do lots of videos. I speak on stage because I want that attention. And it was that little girl inside of me. But it's, it's probably don't settle on the love side of your life. That is really the advice because just because someone pays attention to you doesn't mean they're the perfect person for you. Really evaluate that relationship better. And now I know like my second husband, my current uh, keeper husband, mind you, uh, I went through like the 45 point checklist before I met, before we started really dating. Like <laughs> I have a whole online training for women over 40 online dating program now because of what I learned in the love side of stuff. Oh my God. I know. I'm just, I love it though. Oh my gosh. It's like, this is so good. You are like, this is really good juicy stuff. I cannot wait to like to tap more into that, but it's really such great advice. I mean, because we do, we do things that, you know, I, my dad did the same thing, left me for days and I was a drug addict and alcoholic and I didn't understand it. And it was choosing every other thing but me. And you don't realize that. And then you're looking for love in all the wrong places, you know? So I love this. Katrina, you are such a freaking rock star. I'm so happy that you're here. Share with everyone where they can find you other than the book, because you definitely are getting the book, wgw2book.com. You're going to get the book and you're going to get all the extra juicy stuff that this woman is giving away. However, you might want to follow her and find her so that you can follow her more before the summit launches. Yes, I am on all social media, but jumpstartyourbiznow.com is the main website. And then I have jumpstartpublishing.net because now I help people with books. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. All right, love. I love you so much. Thanks for being here. We'll see you uh, very, very soon. And congratulations on the book. All right. We have got our final guest, but this one, <laughs> just wait. I'm not kidding. This woman, she's like one of my favorite personalities. I mean, I love everyone that I, that I interview, but man, does she bring the juice? Um, <laughs> Anissa Acker, she is a serial entrepreneur, sought after business strategist, transformational leader, national speaker, and a mentor to mission driven entrepreneurs around the world. She helps business owners create systems, hire and inspire the teams and identify the game-changing strategies that enable your business to scale and truly support the lifestyle impact you want. Uh, Anissa is a visionary on a mission to inspire people to create life by their own design. Anissa is also award-winning nationally recognized insurance and financial industry expert. She's the host of the Game Changing Podcast and author of the upcoming Born to Rise, uh, Born to Rise book. She's a graduate of Tony Robbins Platinum Partnership Leadership Program, having a passion for health and fitness as well. She is regularly sought out for her results 
adult in the world of active living. Anissa is the proud mama to three fabulous sons and five amazing grandchildren, keeping her young at heart and in spirit. Sister, are you kidding? Get on out of here. Like five grandchildren? I didn't even know this. Like, stop it. Like, leave it. Look at the arms of this woman. She can stand up and show you her abs. I, I know it. You are fucking amazing. I love you to death. Thank you for being here, like, and being and saying yes to this wild mission. Like, what got you even to go, yes, I'm in? Like, you were, like, so in. What brought you there? I think wild is my middle name. <laughs> Truly. Seriously. Truly. You know what I mean? And I teach all about culture, and if wild's my middle name, man, I got to be somewhere in it. <laughs> And there's no better place or no better people to be in the middle of it with than all of you guys, really. And this is just the beginning. I know, you know, right? This is just the beginning because it has to begin somewhere. So to know that we get to create not just the beginning, but to be a part of the entire journey that's wild in and of itself. That is a wild experience. And I'm all about experiencing life. To me, that's what wild is. Wild is not taming yourself. You were born wild without yeah. boundaries to discover and play. So I know for sure I'm like um, this adventurous spirit. And I play in all kinds of playgrounds. Some I play in a long time and some I tap myself in and go, I don't think so. That's not my space. I'm not having fun in it. Yeah. So to allow somebody else the experience to open up their eyes and know that they have the ability to just play and be wild again and live again like we did when we were kids and make money doing it. <sighs> Like, Sign me hello, up. right? And I love that because it's, it's true. Like this kind of came out of nowhere, right? And all of a sudden this book was like, oh, let's just write a cool book and tell our stories. And it was like, Whoo. I mean, I'm getting these downloads and these messages. I went away for five days, did a full uh, dry fast, water fast. And it was like, you have to do something bigger. Like you, you have got to do something bigger. And all of a sudden these women started coming forward. And, you know, so when you said yes, like this wildness, it's like, I really feel like all of us are really being pulled into it as well. Like, no, this is your mission. Like, this is part of it. Have you been feeling that as well? Like, you've always been, you've done so many amazing things, big businesses, sell businesses. Like, the work that you've done is powerful. But how did this all of a sudden now start weaving into more deeply a mission for you as well? When, when we say pulled, you know what happens is, there's this law of magnetism. And when you fully know thyself, your mission comes into vision. And then you have nowhere else. There is no playing small anymore. There is no playing small. There are no boundaries. And so... When we talk about going wild, this, as you said, yes, this is 22 amazing women right now. This is not just about us going wild, though. This is about humanity going wild and learning to wake up, wake up and step up to who we are and be okay with who we are to know thyself, to love thyself, and to step into our own greatness. Stop trying to play in somebody else's game. There's lots of games to play. Know the game that you like to play so that when you shine your light, everybody else plays with you that has that same light. It's, yes. And then we all shine brighter. Right? I mean, it's it, this is where this is the where the direction's going. I mean, obviously we're supporting that like wildness of women, but it's like people need to wake up and we're like here to go, okay, listen, ladies, no more of this. No more of this letting you be the victim role or the suppression role, or even, you know, the overly powerful masculine woman that demasculates men. Like it's gotta come back into neutrality. And this is where we're gonna thrive. And I, you know, I love it because 
the more voices we have, the more we're speaking for the other voices. And it's like we're so asking everyone to come be wild with us. And it's, 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 I feel it, right? It's a feeling. And I, and I know like for you, like the calling that you're having and, and being able to take your life's work and what you've experienced and put this into a body of work, which is inside the book. And certainly of course, inside of this, this summit, I know it's going to like, we're going to blast everyone, but what, what, um, what was your calling to put into print in the book so that those are, are grabbing it or knowing like, I think you're the last chapter. They're like, bam, open that last book. I would say they saved the best for last, but I don't want to offend y'all. <laughs> Well, you know, everyone is, you know. Seriously, here's a, it, it, you know what's great about being last in it is it brings it back home. Because I talk about true awareness. We get 70,000 thoughts a day. We get everything feeding us. The best awareness is, can be being present to where we are so that we can make the best decision with where we are. And we are overloaded with information. We're overloaded with products. We're overloaded with social media. If we don't have true awareness, we are truly lost. And so it brings it full circle to say, listen, know thyself step into thyself and then we know what mission we're on and then it's easier to create a vision with all of these beautiful women because let's be honest we wouldn't even be here if two didn't become one right so it takes more than us to build an empire to light up a world, but it takes us first knowing who we are, which is that true awareness and what's going on and what is, uh, thoughts are we thinking? The best advice I can give is any thought given to you, whether yours, whether your moms, your dads, your brothers, your sisters, your aunts, your uncles, your teachers, your mentor, your guru, is when they give it to you, always constantly ask, is that my thought? Is that my truth? Is that my truth? Because it may very well be another's, but it may not be yours. And if it's not your truth, then let it go, but don't disgrace another. Because that's where their evil level of evolution is. And it's our responsibility to continue to evolve together. Sometimes we touch a life, as we all know, for a second, for a moment, or for ever. Yeah. Our responsibility is to be present enough. True awareness is to know in that moment is our presence. Ha ha. Gifts. Ha ha. Right? That's the only way we go forward. I, I love it. And um, have you always been this way? Like, has this always kind of been your driver or were you different kid growing up i know my driver is to wake up a billion souls that's part of my mission my driver has always been there because uh when i was 16 i died and went to heaven and i came back when i was 16 i was hit by a car and broke basically everything. I lost my left kidney. I broke my tailbone. I fractured my pelvis in two places. I got pins and rods put inside of my legs. I've now since had them out. I was told I would never walk again. And the best gift I got was I was born again, Ooh. born again. Wow. So with that being born again, that's the best awareness because it was the best reminder I could ever have in my lifetime is how spectacular we are and how small we play to be. We are here wow. to have a lot of fun and to play. There are no mistakes. No mistakes. We're just learning. And part of that learning sometimes doesn't feel good. It feels amazing to walk. It didn't always feel good to do it feels great to drive 
It doesn't feel good when you get into an accident. Does that mean you stop? Mm -mm. It means you get up and you keep going. This is a game of life. Every day you play it. Every day. And every day you play it, you get what's called compound interest. And when you play at your best every day, oh, you win. That's called winning. Yeah, girl. I love it. You just like you. Just, yeah, you hit me with like a, a boom because, you know, I, I didn't know this about you, actually. And I just recently had a really super big scare. Right. I went to the hospital, emergency surgery and full body infection. Like I was literally septic. My body was inflamed in blisters because of the fever was so badly and, uh, and so high. And they had to knock me out. Right. And I was like, am I going to wake up again? I might not wake up again. I have to trust my life and my body. And I, I had to just surrender. And I said, God above, if I'm supposed to be here, I'm gonna wake up. I woke up on fire. It was like, boom. I mean, I have a completely different outlook on life. And I mean, I've loved life, but wow. You're just resonating with my soul, love. You are, because it's, it's true. Like we now, we don't need to have this though to have an amazing life. We don't need to do that. Like this is where we all can come from by just really looking in the inside of ourselves. And I love you for that. Thank you for that message. I'm so excited to freaking hear you, have you on the summit even bigger with your big space and like doing your thing, you know, because we need more of you and everyone deserves to bring this out and to, to see that mirror. And you know what you said, Rhonda, what's so beautiful that you've said is money and mission go together. That's kind of my same message. I say it all the time. Money and mission go together. I never worry about making a paycheck that goes with passion and that's called dollars and cents. And sometimes it doesn't make a lot of sense to do that at all. There's no sense in it, none. And so when I've never worried, about making money. I've always given my gifts and the, allowed the power that be to give me my wealth. And I've never suffered and I've never suffered. And I don't want anybody else to suffer. And that's that true awareness is we've been taught that being self-centered is wrong. And the only place to be is self-centered so that everybody else around you knows how to connect with you. I love it. You're amazing. Where can they find more of you to get more of this juice from you? I am everywhere, obviously. Anissa.com. I got a podcast called The Game Changing Podcast. It's out on social media, you know, Spotify, Apple, all those channels. I'm not a techie person. I'm a people person right? I move people and people are what move tech. And so I have a circle of those kind of people, right? How else to get a hold of me? Instagram, all the cool stuff. Yeah. Lisa, find me. I got purple hair. You probably type in purple hair on Google now and find me. Seriously. You are so amazing. We'll make sure everyone, all of our guests today, will put in the show notes how to find them, but it's always really good to just hear it because that's energy, right? When someone goes, yeah, go find me here. It's like, woo, you know, they've got something for you. And I know also Anissa, along with the other guests here and the authors are going to be uh, giving away a lot of amazing gifts. So if you do get access to our book, um, you can get it right now digitally. Print is coming out very soon. We're giving away a lot of amazing things for you to thank you for being part of this movement and to, to joining us. So Nisa, you're amazing. Thank you so much. And ladies, all of you, I want to thank all of you for being here, for not only sharing your wild story, but truly inside of you knowing your gifts are going to change the world and leave an impact on others. And I am, um, I'm so humbled to be in your presence, to learn from you, to grow together, and to create a movement. And I certainly cannot wait to see all of you on the Women Gone Wild Summit, 28th to October 1st. There's four full days. These ladies are gonna be with, uh, you know, all the other 44 that are gonna be there on a one different day. So we'll make sure you know when they're gonna be speaking, when they're giving away all of their juice and their gifts. And um, 
I just cannot wait to see all of you uh, very, very soon live, right? So we can actually be hugging on to each other. So thank you all for being here so much. <laughs> I appreciate you all dearly. Well, everyone, can you imagine being able to have access to cash, to being told when you're a little girl that you need to go walk back inside and turn on that smile face and then you turn in to a fabulous one that shares her gifts of the world or being able to cultivate and nurture children and give them the passion that they deserve to have and bring it out of them so that they know that they are supported and they're loved or to pump out 12, 20 books and fast and show others how to turn their passions into a gift, how to increase their wealth through their mission. Like this is what's happening. How to create educational programs that completely shift the DNA of someone, like change their life, the trajectory of their life. This is what these women have done. And this is the final episode of the Women Gone Wild series. But there's more. You get more of them. First off, you need to go get that book, wgwbook.com. Please know there's a lot of giving away that we're doing, not only to you, but when you do invest in the book, whether it's print or digital, we also contribute to the local orphanage here in Bali, the Heartstrings Project. We also support the um, Operation Underground, which stops human trafficking and children and mothers that are being sold around the world. And all of these beautiful women have philanthropic opportunities and projects that they work with. So your investment in yourself and learning to be wild and learning from these stories and sharing with others is helping create the ripple. And we're calling it the wild ripple because the more wilder you are, the more you move and take action with others and cultivate this unity of frequency, the more it keeps rippling out. This is what we've got in store for you. There's more. These ladies are not going anywhere. The summit is coming up. We're having live events. They're going to be speaking. I'll be speaking on their stages. We're going to be sharing. I tell you, these women are going to be everywhere and wild is the new currency. So thank you for being at this week's episode. I hope you loved it. Please let the women know below how much you did and go over to their pages and make sure that you also share with them your thoughts and love you have for them. So. Again, ladies, thank you for being here. I am so honored. And thank you for watching and stepping into your wildness. Can't wait to see you on the next episode. Don't forget to be wild and stay unstoppable. Woo! Bye, ladies. You're the best.